in the marketing moments of your life, producing your professional realm and your personal life. You have moments to create that, and every new minute is that moment. When you keep yourself on the straight and narrow of what people expect of you, in a way, you might end up in a different place. But when you decide to exceed their expectations, you might get a whole new door open to you from your company or from another person who says, you know, hey, I like you, and I sort of feel like you could work well for me over here, and maybe a better opportunity for you and your family, whatever that is today. We have families of origin, and we have families of choice, and what the Lord expects us to do is to leave the house of our mother and father and go off and create our own families, which means that we have a separation between our birth origin and our birth orders and our family of provision from the house of the Lord. People often interfere with what God wishes to provide them in those lessons and moments in time, but people also do that in a way to save people, but openly they can't do that if they're not in the house of God. You see, in the house of God, you hear the Heavenly Father saying, Stop, wait, stay out of that, don't do that, you're not in charge of that. But the house of God knows what the rules of men are, too. And Jesus spoke about that many times. He said, let Caesar have his due, but let God own you. The Lord of America knows where we are in every aspect of time. I have proven that as a pagan, and now I'm a priest because of it. And where my priesthood comes from is the Lord. But you may not like it. You may not like its origin. But you know what? You can go off and create your own ministry if that's on your life to do. But you have your own ministry in the way you market yourself in moments of time to people you meet, like me, or like other people on the street. How you market yourself, how you carry yourself, how you walk yourself in and out of people's lives, whether they are long-term friendships or short-term strangers, that's on your life. There's always an arrogant woman who will say, you know, if it's meant to be, it'll be there. But they walk in and out of people's lives and they steal from them time, money, energy, and then they want to walk away like they have no responsibility. I didn't do that. You did that on you. I was just trying to be your friend. You saw something new. No, the Lord reveals to people like me. And openly, I do hear from the house of God just like you can which is a promise in the works across the land on America, not at all, on the Lord. The whole reason the American continent was founded in the first place. But you want to step around in your arrogance saying, I'm in control of me, I'm in control of you, I'm going to harm you because you hurt my feelings. Who gives a shit? I don't even know you. I'm just pointing out the obvious. When I speak on retail, I'm pointing out the obvious. If you want to be a stellar retail employee, then do it. And don't give me a bad experience with you. And then I believe in you. And then I think, okay, whatever 10 to $12 salary you're making, it must be good enough for you. Or you might have a second or third job because you're only getting part-time hours, which is what companies do in America. They hire people for a short-term thing like seasonal work. Seasonal work might pay for food, but it's not going to pay for your apartment or where you need to live or how you get out of the snow, the sleet, the hail. But hey, that's not on me unless it's my life. It is on you if it is your life. But if your work isn't going well, that sometimes we have to change perspectives. I can remember writing a resume for someone who wanted to change her work slightly. And I said, look, why don't you go do this type of work? And maybe I said that. I'm pretty sure I said that. But let's use your resume to write about what really skills you have today as opposed to the positions you held and the duties and responsibilities you did or didn't do well. You see, your talents are what the Lord gives you. Your beauty is something that comes from your genes, but openly, whether you're a handsome girl or a handsome boy or an ugly woman or an ugly guy, it's not the point. The point is, how does your soul shine to honor the house of the Lord today? If you're a liar, if you're a thief, if you're a business person who harms people, then that's who you are in God's house today.